Okay, next we're going to check out the actions in Reaper. Now, everything we do in Reaper involves an action. If I select this and delete it, I performed an action. Or if I undo it, I performed another action. And all these actions are listed in the actions window. If we go to actions, we could open the action list. We could also open it with a keystroke right here. Now, right now, this list is floating. But to make it easier to see, let's dock it. Right click, choose to dock it, and now it's docked. But to make this easier to see, let's dock it to the left side. So I'll grab it over here and pull it to the left side. See what turns gray? And now it's over here. And now it's open another window. The big clock. This way the action list is in the upper left corner. And let's go over here and drag our tracks to the far left, making it easier to see our arrangement window and the action list at the same time. So let's go through this list. As I mentioned before, the delete key performs an action. So if we go to find shortcut and type delete, it goes to that action right here. It's going to remove items, tracks, and envelope points. But we could change it right over here. We could change the shortcut or keystroke that performs that action. Now, as we go through this list, there's a lot of items that don't have keystrokes assigned to them. This one does, but this one doesn't. But we could assign keystrokes to them, and we could take keystrokes off of others. Now, the best way to find actions is by using the filter up here. Type in zoom, and just the actions that have zoom in their name are going to show up. And from here, we could tweak them. We could add keystrokes to them, take others off, change them. Anything we want to customize as far as actions can be done in here. So let's add a keystroke to a few actions that don't have them. Let's go to our filter and type in trim. And right over here, we could choose this action. Trim left edge of item to edit cursor. Let's say we're editing our item, like this guitar. We want to trim the left edge. Well, the trimming tool can't be seen right now. So, what we could do is split it and then delete this, and that trims the left edge. But we could perform that with one action. So, let's undo that. Just select right here, go to this action, hit run, and that does the same thing. But it's quicker with a keystroke. Let's assign a keystroke to this. Go to Add, and we'll type in Control L. Now you can use any keystroke that you want, but this one isn't being used on my system. Hit OK. Now I can click over here, type that keystroke, and it trims to the beginning. We can do the same thing on the other side using this action trim right edge of item to edit cursor. Add a keystroke. I'll use Control R. And I can go right here, hit that keystroke, and it trims the right side. So it's a great way of trimming our items very quickly. And to delete those keystrokes, just choose them, hit delete right here, and there's no keystroke assigned to that action. Let's delete this one too. Let me show you another. Let's say we want to change the volume of an item. We can go up here to our filter and type in item volume. And right over here, we have a couple of items. Nudge item volumes up 1 dB and nudge item volume down 1 dB. So let's assign a keystroke to those actions. I'll use Control U for up and Control D for down. Now I can select an item. Like this hi hat, hit Control D, and the item volume goes down. Let's do it with the guitar instead. Control D brings it down, 5 dB, back up with Control U. So we can adjust the volume very quickly and with more precision 
with these two keystrokes. Just select them and adjust them. It's pretty handy when you adjust the item volume very often. And we can also sort our actions by their keystrokes. If we go over here, let's clear this and choose this over here. All the actions are listed by their keystroke. So we can very easily see what's assigned to what. Or we could list them by the description. We could also find shortcuts with this button here. So if I hit V, it shows us what action is assigned to that key. In this case, it's going to show the volume envelope. So if I click over here on the hi-hat track, hit V, it creates a volume envelope. Hit it again, and it hides it. So that's what's assigned to that key. So it's very easy to find and change things by using this option. Hit P, and it goes right to pan. So if we want to change that keystroke, we could delete it and add a new one. Now when we change all our keystrokes, we're going to want to save that for future use. In case we change it too much and we want to go back to our personal settings, we can go right here, export all, and then we can give it a name and save it to our system. And then later on, if we want to go back to that, we go to import. Now we could also save just specific ones. So if we change this one and this one, we could just export those two. And if we really mess things up, we can restore all the actions back to the factory default right here. Now the real power of using actions is creating custom actions. Custom actions will perform multiple actions at the same time. Let me give you an example. Let's say we wanted to mute this area right here. Normally, we'd split over here, over here, select this, right click, and choose to mute it. That's a lot of steps. We can cut this down and do it in one step with a custom action. So let's undo that. And let's go over here to custom actions and choose new. Then we can go to our filter and type in split time. And right over here is an action to split items at time selection. Let's drag it over to the right. Now we have a first action that's going to be performed. But we could add to this list to create a custom action. Go back to our filter and type in item mute. We could choose this action, item properties mute, and drag this over as well. So now those two actions are going to be performed with one keystroke. Give it a name. We'll name it split mute. Hit OK. Now we have a custom action right up here that's going to do that. Let's give it a keystroke. I'll use Control S. So now let's create a time selection right over here using the lasso tool. Let's hit that keystroke and it split it and then it muted it in one keystroke. Undo this. Let's go over here, do the same thing. Hit that keystroke. It splits it and mutes it in one shot. Now, in the end, we're left with a time selection that we really don't need. So we could hit escape, which clears it, or we could add that to our custom action. Let's go back to this, edit the custom action, and let's add another action over here. Go back to our filter, type in remove time, and right over here, we can remove the time selection. Drag this over. Now we have three actions performed by one keystroke. Undo this. And now it's select an area over here. Hit that keystroke. It split it, muted it, and then clear the time selection. So it's a lot quicker to mute notes this way. Just go right here, hit the keystroke, and it's muted. Let's create another one. Let's show our tracks over here, just a little bit. 
Let's delete this one. Now, a lot of times when I'm duplicating tracks, let's duplicate this one. Go to track, duplicate tracks. It duplicates it along with the items. But a lot of times I don't want it to do that. So I usually duplicate them, double click that, then delete them. That's a bunch of extra steps. Like I said, most of the time, I just want the track, the settings that are on it, the effects, but not the items. So let's create a custom action to do that. Let's delete this track. And let's go over here and create a new custom action. We'll type in duplicate, duplicate tracks, drag that over. Then we'll type in select all items in track. Right over here, add that as well. And then finally, remove items. Remove items right here. Now we have three actions that are going to be performed all at once. We're going to duplicate the track or tracks, select all items in the track, and then remove them. So let's give that a name Custom Duplicate. Give it a keystroke over here. I'll use Control D. And if you ever choose a keystroke that's already being used, Reaper will warn you that you're about to overwrite another one. So you can choose to change your mind and choose a different one or overwrite it. Now we could select the track, hit that keystroke, and it duplicated it and removed the item. So all we have is the track right here, not the item. Let's do it again. Let's do it with the hi-hat, hit the keystroke. It duplicates it without the items. So again, it saves you those extra steps. Now there's so many custom actions that we can create. Anytime you find you're doing multiple actions at the same time, just create a custom action to do it all at once and really try to be creative with it. Because one of the best things about Reaper is how customizable it is. So anyway, that's actions in Reaper. Let's move on. Mm -hmm.